Hi everyone! Today I'm going to be showing you how to make this flame bucket hat. The patterns for these two are already listed on my Etsy store if you want to check out the written version as well. The three winners of the pattern giveaway from the last week is announced in the description box below. Please contact me within one week to claim your prize. So in this video, I'm going to show you how to make this simpler version of this flame bucket hat. I noticed most people like the more advanced version, but honestly, I find the simple orange suits me better. Because the flame design is fixed, the number of the rounds for the top part of the hat is fixed as well. Just make sure you use the same category yarn as I do, otherwise it will turn out bigger or smaller than my measurements. But the finished measurements should fit most people, so you shouldn't need to worry about that. To make this hat, you will need your yarn, hook, scissors, and a yarn needle, and that's it. So let's get started. I'm going to be using this one. Unfortunately, I don't have this in black, so I'm just going to use a random brand to substitute for the black. This yarn calls for a 4mm crochet hook. We're going to start from the top of the hat with a magic ring. If you know how to make a magic ring any other way, you can do that as well. In this ring, we're going to make six single crochets. To make a single crochet, you're going to insert your hook in the ring, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two loops on the hook. So that's the first single crochet. Go ahead and make five more in the ring. So insert your hook, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two. Okay, so now I have six single crochets. I'm gonna put a stitch marker in the first stitch. And we're always gonna do that for every round. Then you're gonna pull this short end to close the loop. So that completes round one. For this pattern, we're now going to slip stitch and chain one. As soon as we finish the last stitch, we're going to directly start the next round. So insert your hook in the stitch marker, which is the first stitch. So we're starting from the first stitch. In this stitch, make two single crochets. So that's the first one. Then you're going to insert your hook in the same stitch. And make a second single crochet. Don't forget to mark your first stitch. Then again, in the next stitch, work two single crochets. Next stitch, two single crochets. Then 
Next stitch, two single crochets. Keep doing this. until your next stitch is marked. So from this marked stitch, which is the first stitch, we should have 12 single crochets. So that's round two. Round three, we're gonna do two, one, and repeat. That means in the marked stitch, put two single crochets, Mark your first stitch. Then in the next stitch, work one single crochet. Okay, so that's what I mean by two, one. And then we're gonna repeat. So in the next stitch, work two single crochets again. In the next stitch, one single crochet. Keep repeating this until you reach the stitch marker. Okay, that's round three. Round four, we're going to do one, one, two, and repeat. So in the stitch marker, do one single crochet. Mark the first stitch. In the next stitch, one single crochet. And then in the next stitch, two single crochets. That's one, one, two. Repeat again. One, one, and two in the same stitch. So go ahead and finish this round. That's round four. Round five, do two one 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 in the first stitch work two single crochets and then in the next stitch work one single crochet next stitch one single crochet and next stitch one single crochet so that's two, one, one, one. And then we're going to repeat that again. So go ahead and finish this round. So that's round five. From round six, we're going to shift the um, increased spot just a few stitches away from the original increased spot, the increased spot from the last round if we keep increasing at the same spot um, this one wouldn't be a circle anymore it would have angles which is not what we want so we're still increasing every round following a pattern um, if you remember this one is two one and the next round would be two one one and the next round would be two one 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 and as you can expect the next one is two one 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 so we're still doing that we're still increasing but we're just going to rotate it a little bit every round okay so round six we're going to shift it a little bit we're not going to start with an increase uh, which is the two i was talking about 
we are going to start with one single crochet in the first two stitches. So in the first stitch, work one single crochet, mark your stitch. In the next stitch, one single crochet. And then we can start a pattern, which is two, one, 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 one. So in the next stitch, two single crochets. And then one single crochet in the next four stitches. And then do two, one, 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 one again. So go ahead and finish this round. At some point, when you finish the pattern, two, one, 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 you'll find you have three stitches left. Um, you don't need to worry about that. Just keep following the pattern. So the next stitch is two single crochets. And then one in the next stitch. One in the next stitch again. Round seven, we're going to do one single crochet in the first four stitches first. So that's one. In the next stitch, put one more. Next stitch, one. Next stitch, one. Then I can start a pattern which is one increase. So two single crochets in the next stitch. And then one single crochet in the next five stitches. So when I finish the pattern one last time, I should have two stitches left. Again, you're going to follow the pattern to two single crochets in the next stitch. Then one in the next stitch. Then um, it should connect back to the first four stitches as a pattern. The next round, which is round eight, um, put one single crochet in the first six stitches. No increase, just one single crochet in each stitch. six okay and then let me show you how you can know when to increase without counting so you see this one here this is an increase we put two stitches in one stitch okay so whenever you see these you're going to put one single crochet in each of them so finish that and then in the very next stitch you're going to make an increase. We're not increasing on the increase stitches, but instead we move it to the next stitch. If you're able to tell your stitches, you pretty much don't need to count at all, not even the rounds, because you'll be able to tell which round you're at according to the pattern of that round. Okay, so we just finished six stitches here. The next one should be an increase. So two single crochets in that stitch. And then one single crochet in the next six stitches. So I see my increase stitches here. I have two of them. 
I'm going to put one single crochet in each of them. As I told you before, the next stitch should be an increase again. And then you can double check here. There should be six single crochets between two increases. Okay, so we just did an increase from here. You can keep counting if you want one single crochet in the next six stitches. Or you can just look at the stitches and know where you need to increase. The last stitch should be an increase. I have an increase just right here. And I also finished one single crochet in um, the last six stitches. So I need to put an increase here. So that's round eight. Round nine. Start with an increase. Then do one single crochet in the next seven stitches. There is an increase here, so it tells me the next stitch should be an increase. So put two single crochets in the next stitch. Then one in the next seven stitches. Four, five, six. Then an increase again. So go ahead and finish this round. At the end of the row, you should have one increase followed by one single crochet in the next seven stitches. The next round is round 10. Start with one single crochet in the first two stitches. Mark your first stitch. Then the pattern should be one increase followed by one single crochet in the next eight stitches. And then we finished two single crochets in the two increase stitches. In the next stitch, I can work and increase again. And followed by one single crochet in the next eight stitches. So go ahead and finish this round. Round 11, start with one single crochet in the first four stitches. Then the pattern for this round is one increase. Followed by one single crochet in the next nine stitches. For me, nine stitches is a lot to count. So I'm going to start using the little trick I showed you before and finish this round. Okay, so that's round 11. For round 12, work one single crochet in the first six stitches.
then uh, the pattern for this round is one increase followed by one single crochet in the next 10 stitches. So keep repeating that and finish this round. So that was round 12. Round 13 is a little bit special. We have to count the stitches for this round. We're going to start with an increase. Then work one single crochet in the next 11 stitches. So you have to count your stitches from 1 to 11. You can't rely on the pattern in the last round. So after 11 stitches, make an increase again followed by 11 single crochets. Repeat that pattern and finish this round. So for round 14, start with one single crochet in the first two stitches. So the pattern for this round is one increase followed by one single crochet in the next 12 stitches. And for this round, you can see we're able to tell when to increase again. So repeat the pattern, one increase followed by 12 single crochets and finish this round. Round 15, one single crochet in the first four stitches. And the pattern for this round is one increase followed by one single crochet in the next 13 stitches. Go ahead and finish this round. For round 16, work one single crochet in the first six stitches. And the pattern for this round is one increase followed by one single crochet in the next 14 stitches. Repeat that pattern and finish this round. This circle is now around 7 inches in diameter. I think that's big enough for most people. I don't imagine the top of a bucket hat should be too big, but if you want this to be a little bigger, you can keep increasing for one to two more rounds. I already designed the flame pattern and the increase pattern for the brim. So if you want to increase a little more here, just keep in mind you'll have to adjust the flame pattern for the brim. Okay, so from me, I'm gonna stop increasing here. My top is finished. Next, we're gonna do one back loop only round. You can think of it as the transition round between the top and the middle of the hat. So we're just gonna do one single crochet in each stitch. But we're gonna insert our hook in the back loop only. Make a single crochet. Next stitch, back loop, one single crochet. By going in the back loop only, this section has a tendency to fold downwards. So go ahead and finish this round like this. Okay, so this is round 17. We're gonna do two more rounds, round 18 and 19, before we change color. But from the next round, we're gonna go back to inserting our hook under both loops.
and for the middle part of the hat there is no increase just one uh, single crochet in every stitch so do this for two rounds so I finished round 18 and 19 and I've brought out the pattern from the next round round 20 we're gonna start the pattern so what you're seeing right now is only half the pattern once we finish this we're gonna repeat this one more time but this is basically what it's gonna look like on the hat so because we're working from the top of the hat the first row to us the first row is going to be this one and then the next row next all the way to the bottom and for all the rounds for every round we're going to start from the right to left so as i mentioned before this is round 20. we're going to start from here from right to left there are 48 stitches so the pattern tells us we should do the first 47 in black and then the last one in orange okay so you're gonna do your first 46 when you get here I'll show you how to change color from the next stitch So my next one is number 46. The next one is 47, um, which is still black. The next one is 48, which is orange. So what we're going to do is to change color one stitch earlier. So if this one, 48, is orange we're going to prepare for it at number 47 so we're still going to insert a hook in the next stitch and pull up a loop because the next stitch is orange we're going to use the orange yarn to pull through these two loops so grab your orange yarn and use it to pull through Now we can work the next stitch. So I'm going to insert my hook. Put your orange tail and the black yarn on the hook so we can carry them in the work. Use the orange yarn to pull up a loop. Now if the next stitch is orange, I'm going to use this orange yarn to pull through to finish this stitch okay but if the next stitch is black i'm gonna switch color here so for this pattern as i said before this is only half of it once we're done with the first row we're gonna repeat it again so i'm gonna start from here again from this black here so that means the next stitch is black so what i'm gonna do is drop this orange yarn and pick up the black one and use it to finish this stitch. Then I'm gonna keep carrying the other two tails in the work like this and work the next stitch. Insert my hook in the next stitch. Make sure you carry these ones. Use the black yarn to pull up a loop use the black yarn to finish this stitch because the next stitch is still black okay so that's the first black we're going to do the first row again so that is 47 blacks again and you can stop at 46 so i can show you how to change color again just reminding you again through all the stitches in black you're going to keep carrying these two and work your stitches
So I just finished number 46. I am two stitches away from the stitch marker. At one point, you'll notice the short end ran out. All you have left is one black yarn and one orange. Okay, so let's do that color transition together again. The next stitch is black and the last one is orange. So I'm going to still insert my hook in the next stitch. Use the black yarn to pull up a loop. And because the next stitch is orange, I'm going to use the orange yarn to finish this stitch. So I'm going to drop the black yarn and pick up the orange yarn. Make sure they don't like tangle around here. It's okay if they tangle a little bit here because you're not going to see it. It's going to be in the work. But just make sure they don't tangle here. The left one stays on the left. The right one stays on the right. So I'm going to pick up the orange yarn. Carry the black yarn. Use the orange yarn to finish this stitch. The next stitch is orange. So I'm going to insert my hook. Carry the black yarn. Use the orange to pull up a loop. So that's the last stitch. Then we're going to move on to the next row, which is this one. And as you can see, the first stitch is still black. So right here, I have to change color again to prepare for the next stitch. I'm going to drop the orange yarn, pick up the black yarn, carry the orange yarn, use the black to finish this stitch. And the next stitch is the first stitch of round 21. So the first stitch is black. Insert my hook, carry orange, work the black. Because the next stitch is still black, I can use the black yarn to pull through. So that is seven blacks. I'm going to work six first. The seven is still black. Insert my hook, carry orange, pull up a loop. The next stitch is orange, drop black, pick up orange, carry black, finish this stitch. Next stitch orange, insert my hook, carry black, pull up a loop. The next stitch is black, so drop orange. Pick up the black, carry orange, finish this stitch. Between these orange, there are 38 blacks. So I'm going to work 37 first. Another simple way is just to look at where the color is sitting um, in relation to the orange in the last row. But it could be a little tricky because we're looking at it upside down, if you know what I mean. So anyway, I got to this orange. My next, next stitch is orange. So I'm going to prepare for it one stitch earlier. I'm still going to insert my hook in the next stitch. Use the black yarn to pull up a loop. And then I'm going to change color. I'm going to drop the black yarn, pick up the orange one. And finish this stitch. Then I'm going to work the orange stitch. 
The last stitch is black. So I'm going to switch back to black, carry the orange yarn, and finish this stitch. The next stitch is black. So we finished the pattern once. Okay, and then we're going to go back to the same row and do it again. So the first stitch is black. So I can use the black yarn to finish this stitch and start the pattern again from the next stitch. Seven blacks. Next one is number seven. And the next stitch is orange. Then the next one, black again. So by now you should know how it works. If you haven't got it yet, just rewind the video and watch it again. So from here, you're gonna do the pattern. Just do every row here from right to left and repeat every row twice for each round. And I'll see you when you finish the second last round, which is round 31. I've done round 31 once already. Now I'm going to do it a second time. So when I do it a second time, this stitch is the last stitch in black. So here I'm going to show you how to fasten off. I'm going to finish this stitch in black. Switch to orange. Then I'm going to carry the black for a few stitches. I did nine stitches here, but it doesn't really matter how many exactly. Then I'm going to leave about 20 centimeters and cut the black yarn. And from the next stitch, I'm going to stop carrying the black yarn. Just work uh, regular single crochets right here. Not carrying this one. And then I'm going to go ahead and finish this round. The next round, 32. As you can see, it's just all orange. So from here, we don't need the black anymore. All we need is the orange yarn. And just ignore the last row here because from the next round, we're going to do increase. So I'm going to turn this off. So in the first stitch, we're going to make an increase by working two single crochets in that stitch. And then we'll do one single crochet in the next five stitches. So you're going to keep following this pattern and finish this round. And then you're going to do two rounds without any increase. Just one uh, single crochet in every stitch from the first to the last stitch. So that's round 32, 33, and 34. Now I finished those three rounds. For round 32, you should be able to finish that pattern one last time. One increase followed by five single crochets. If you're able to do that, that means your stitch count is right. You didn't make any mistake. So that's how you can double check. So next round is 35. In the first stitch, make an increase. And then do one single crochet in the next six stitches. So you're going to follow this pattern and finish this round. After this round, we're going to do five rounds of single crochets, now increase. So again, that's one single crochet in every stitch. So finish that and I'll see you back here. The 
The next round is the last round. In the first stitch, make a back post single crochet. To do that, you're going to insert your hook around the stitch from the back. around the stitch and pull up a loop then finish your single crochet in the next stitch do the same a back post single crochet this gives the edge a finished look and it also gives it a tendency to bend downwards Continue doing this in every stitch for the entire round. Now I have one stitch left. If you work this stitch normally and then slip stitch in the next stitch, it's going to leave a big hole here, which is really obvious. So I'm going to show you my way of fastening off in this case. So the stitch is here. I'm going to insert my hook from the back. And this time I'm not going to go in the next stitch. Instead, I'm going to go in the stitch just below it. So you're kind of like going diagonal here. Then you're going to pull up a loop and finish this stitch. And I'm not going to chain one here. I just pull yarn through and cut it. Leave around 20 centimeters so you can weave it in. And then just grab your needle, go under both loops of the next stitch. And then back in this stitch. And then you just weave the rest in like you normally would. Fasten off the top and the black end in the same way, and then you're done.